Terry's 50. And we are been- live. Okay, we are live, but we have zero post reach. <laughs> With zero donuts. You know, that's the downside of not using the group as often as we want. Yeah, we don't use that group very much. It's hard to keep up with all these groups. So I have, um, I'm getting rid of a couple, I'm getting rid of two of my groups so soon, but yeah, well, welcome. I see we have a couple viewers on, so welcome. Okay. And Terry, I would like you hit record and start out the show unless you've already hit record. I did hit record, so we're not doing the typical intro because obviously we're old now, Janet E. Johnson. We don't even have to bother with all that fancy shenanigans that we used to back in the old days. Remember when we were like 44, 45 and started doing this show? <laughs> that was the show when we started it. Yeah, that's a good point. It was a long damn time ago. Why why have we been doing this this long? Have you questioned that at all? <laughs> You know, it's it's a very interesting to me if we want to talk about the the whole like podcast thing. It's um, I have had people say that I've been hearing market other marketers say that the number one thing you should be doing is a podcast. I still hear it today. Like lots of people talk about you got to have a podcast. You got to have a podcast. Um, so you know, I think it's not a bad thing to do. I just think we well I, we've had so much fun with it. First off, that's I think part of it. If we did not have fun with it, I think we would have given it up a long time ago. So like fun. I'm a I think that's, that's one thing. We've met a lot of fantastic people that we've interviewed. So that's mm-hmm. another reason. And then, you know, it's just a good uh, authority building method of marketing. So, um, you know, now I'm doing the in-between shows that are very, very specific to my niche, you know, and so that's part of this too, but it's just the mini ones. So we kind of have, you know, you've got to niche it down. We've talked about, but that's the whole thing on the podcast. So yeah, we have done it a long time and we started a little younger. Yes, we definitely Thanks. did. I don't know that I look any older and you actually probably look younger. Now you said you were looking at pictures from when you were 20 and people didn't believe that it was you. Did they think you look better now or then? Could they, did, were they? Better now. Yeah, well, I, I mean, we haven't talked about this deeply on the show. No big deal at this point, but I had an eating disorder back in my 20s. So I get, I ballooned. So I was really 20 some pounds heavier than I am now. Okay. So, and I had dark brown hair and it was big, you know, <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, I have improved, you know, the wrinkles are a little worse, you know, that's the only thing that, you know, but not, mine aren't too bad, but I'm noticing them a little bit, you know, I started graying at 23. So that really didn't matter. I mean, whatever, you know, cause that just gets covered up. That's why I'm a blonde now. <laughs> that's why I'm a blonde. Yeah. See, that's what I, I just cut it all off. So it doesn't even yeah. seem like it's gray. Right. And he says all of it. Like I don't have like a face full of white Santa Claus looking hair. Yeah. That's cute. Terry, you and your all. I was looking at a photo. Um, it was probably 2005, 2006. So not terribly long ago, 15 years ago. Uh, when I first started zapping my hair off and frankly, my hairline hasn't changed much at all in that time. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm happy about that. I um, think it hits a lo- yeah, little younger usually. And then it just kind of stops. Yeah, it stays. It? I don't mm-hmm. know. I've, I've only That's what I've kind of noticed with many. Yeah. This so. head of hair. So yeah, so my we were talking year old starting to recede. So yeah, he's, Ooh. you see it you start seeing it about that age yep at times so yeah it seems frustrating yeah. so what's what are you're not you're not fit yet so can i can i impart some wisdom as the significantly <laughs> elder statesman here <laughs> because- all right well let's first off we'll talk to the people that are watching live oh hi the- people this is a little bit celebration of Terry and I getting old. No, I'm just kidding. That's <laughs> actually how it's titled. And it's Terry. So it actually has an extra expletive in it. So and you might be listening on the podcast. So this is uh, where we just decided to get together to talk because we just are right at that 50 age at this point. So we decided to have a little celebration. But if you are jumping on and you're one of those that graduated with us because we all went to high school with a whole bunch of people that are turning that age, let us know that you're here because I've seen a lot of birthdays come through. Uh, So that's what this is about. Our 50th, yes, we'll say it out loud, but I'm still 49. Um, (laughs) You are, that's true, it is. 
So what is your wisdom, Terry? Let's talk about the wisdom and talk about some things that we've learned along the way and what we plan to do in the future too. You know, let's start at the, at the highest level. If, if I would have known that 50 felt like this, um, I wouldn't have been like, ew, gross, that's so old. I had, I had no idea. Right. You're reasonably active, too. I know you still go out and rollerblade in the summer and you go out and work out and do exercises all the time. I, I don't feel like I've missed a beat. Right. I was I just for the hell of it. I was in the gym the other day and I took a photo and I had the 45 pound dumbbell over my head because, um, well, frankly, because I didn't grab the 50 pound dumbbell, which I would have popped right up over my head still. Right. I, I thought by 50, like parts of my body were going to be falling off and I was going to need a walker and maybe <laughs> I'd be wearing Depends every day and, you know, couldn't get it up or do any of the fun shit. Turns out that was for your benefit, Janet e. Johnson. Turns out everything still works just the way it did, man. Like I, I have a little I bit have a of a little more aches and pains. Do you? I do. Oh yeah. Okay. An arm thing going on. Knees are a little more sore. <laughs> I have all these. I got ailments. tennis elbow from doing the computer work too much. I, you know. <laughs> how do you get tennis elbow from working on a laptop? You do. Does it's that make like, sense? It's, it's this. It's the mouse. It's the, it's the mouse. mouse. You see, picking that mouse. Um. By yeah. the way, John. I don't know how to say your last name, Arting. He said to you, what hairline? <laughs> you shut up, John. You're not very funny. That's not funny at all. I have lots of hair. I just am not showing it right now. I'm sitting. <laughs> I still have a hairline. All right. All right. So that's good. So I have a little more aches and pains, I will admit, for sure. But <clears throat> still, I'm still very, very yeah, healthy overall. Yeah. but I Very do. healthy. All right. So aches and pains, right? Um you know, I will know, I will say this, if I'm being totally honest, when I first get up and I get out of bed and I walk to wherever I'm walking, uh, I'm moving a little slower than I used to. Right. But that's a, that's a 42 second problem. That's not a, that's not an all day thing, right? The energy level's fine. So the, the physical feeling isn't nearly as bad or as different or as off as I thought it was going to be. So that's one. Yeah. I agree. I'm pretty close, but I just have a few aches and pains that are annoying, but okay. So and I, and I don't move it quite as fast as I used to. There's a few times where I'm going up this, my kid will call mom, you look like an old lady. Cause I do have low back problems. So he, he'll joke with me. My kids love me calling me old, but well, that's why they're kids. kids they're for, supposed yeah. to. Yeah. Exactly. They're supposed to. Two, number two, um, like some wisdom right? Some knowledge, like, not like I think this, or I might believe this, but there is shit that you definitively know that you didn't know back then. And what's crazy enough to me is one of my favorite sayings over the last five or 10 years is if I was half as smart as I thought I was at 18, <laughs> I would be in a much better place, right? It's amazing what we've actually unlearned and un begin to really understand. And I feel like the smarter that you get over time, the more you realize you just don't know. I agree. I agree. I look back at like my first 25 years of life <clears throat> and I really was just set on college, going to school, being a teacher, going to college, getting good grades, blah, 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 did it all. And then I graduated from college and ran into a sales company and ended up doing a completely different thing, becoming the entrepreneur. But honestly, I was very, very smart in brain smart, but I was not street smart. Not at all. Like, seriously, I knew nothing about the world outside of my little world that I was in. So I agree with you. And now in the last 25 years, it's amazing what's happened. Just but all my, all my learning has come from online. Like if you think about it, everything we've learned, really, we've just done it by learning ourselves, not by going to school necessarily. Ooh, yeah, that's a whole different conversation. <laughs> I've, been, I've been trying to tell my kids she didn't have to go to college for about eight years. Now, part of that could be I didn't want to pay for college. But part of it really is, to your point, 
I think we gain so much more wisdom and so much more knowledge outside of school books. School, college in particular, super good at teaching you how to learn. But for the rest of it, there's not a lot of value there right? It teaches you maybe how to prioritize your time a little bit, right? Some time management skills. I got this test that I have to study for. I got this paper that is due. But aside from that, there's not a ton. My youngest has already made the decision. He keeps saying to me, mom, I learn every more. He goes, mom, I learn more online than I learn at all in school, especially because they're hardly in school now. But, <laughs> you know, so he likes learning, which is good, but he likes learning about certain things. His thing right now is building computers, which is not a cheap habit. So he needs a job, but <laughs> that's his thing. Like he's, you know what I mean? So he's already got it. I get that, but it's, it, it's college isn't for everyone. I, I completely, so that could be a whole nother conversation, but I look at like what happened the last 25 years of my life. And I have, I mean, I don't plan on retiring at 65 years old by any means, you know? No, it's because so, you like what you do right? Yeah. Well, and it's, it's simple to do from anywhere. Do I want to move to where palm trees are? Yes. But I could do that with my business. So it doesn't matter. You know, I love that part. I, yeah, I talk about that all the time. I'm like, I, I feel like I've been semi retired for the last 15 years, right? Because ultimately, I kind of work with the people I want to work with, or don't right i spend time doing the things i want to do or don't I, my world hasn't really felt like a like a dredge right i don't have that same oh god it's monday i've never had that right and so i'm fortunate in that respect um but i've also co-created that respect right i've taken action i've made decisions that allow that to be true uh and i've probably taken some chances that other people may not have been as interested in change it, taking too right oh, the, yeah, there's definitely there's some risk and i've probably given up some things that other people wouldn't have given up right i'm yeah. not sitting around with two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in the bank like i would have expected at a minimum level at 50. Yep. Right. Yep. That's, that's the entrepreneur life. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. You know, every, I'm, I'm still like, still getting up at that plate, hoping to knock it out of the park and still expect to. So that's an interesting piece. All yeah. right. So we talked a little bit about the physicality. We talked a little bit about the wisdom. Um, relationships, man, is uh, the relationship mm -hmm. to self, I think is a lot better and a lot more easy to understand. You know who you are at a level that you're not trying to put up some bullshit mask for other people, yeah. right? Yeah. And you don't have time for people that don't just like, we either vibe and resonate or we don't. And it's good either way with me. I don't care. Yep. You know? So yep. there's something about That's, that. Uh, think about like back in your 20s, even 30s. Yeah, like wanting to, you know, impress others and it like, now, do I have to have a brand? Yes, because of what we do, we have to have like a certain look and, you know, a certain feel and that kind of thing. Um, you know, I'm still very careful what I post on Facebook. I'm not a, you're not, but. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still, me too. <laughs> yeah. But, but the big thing is, I yeah, I'm just totally. I think about how depressed I was maybe in my twenties even and unconfident and that kind of thing. And now, um, yeah, I mean, I have complete confidence and I don't care. Like, I just don't care. I will do what, you know, I have fun with things. I try to the most I have now, let me, let me show you one of my birthday presents Okay. because let's talk about having fun. You will love this birthday present because one of my, like, I've really embraced like what I, what I have fun with. And one of my things is. I'm going flamingo. Yeah. Well, wait, are you ready? It's loud. <laughs> so I had to put that. That's fantastic. So that was a present I got for my friend. So I just, you know, like I have fun with things and I, you know, you got to let loose and just have fun. 
that's the bottom line. I, you know what, I just posted something about funds my MO, right? It's, Mm -hmm. that's just the, what it, it, there was a great movie that came out for, for kids not too terribly long ago called Rise of the Guardians, not Guardians of the Galaxy, but Rise of the Guardians. It it was about Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny and Jack Frost and uh, the Tooth Fairy and the Sandman, and they were guardians of childhood right guardians of children and imagine love that movie. creativity right yep. such a good movie such a mm-hmm. good movie. and and santa santa says um what is at your core right at the core of your being what are you all about and santa says at the core of my being i'm about wonder and wonderment right mm. and and jack frost came out and they realized that jack frost was all about fun and i'm like well damn it i'm jack frost man <laughs> I just, that's it. I like, if it's not fun, I'm not going to do it. And if I have to do it, I can promise you I ain't going to do it again. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. But if it's fun, I'm, let's do it. Let's try it at least once. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's things you got to do in life that are not fun. Believe me. I mean, even I've running Facebook ads, I guess I'd say I have fun with Facebook ads because it's challenging to me. There you go. So I guess that's, you know, the fun side of it where it's like, oh, wait, how much are, is he a lead today? You know, how can, low can we get that down? It's a challenge, you know? So that's, I guess I have fun with it too. But then there's the other side where you just, you know. Have yeah, fun, fun doesn't it. have to be it's five o'clock somewhere and you're drinking and you're laughing, <laughs> right? It, that's, there's other kinds of fun. Hanging with flamingos. And- <laughs> <laughs> flamingos and palm trees, though, those are fun. I like that. Yes. Like that. yes. So yep. we talked about the, the relationship to self and the, the, the caring about others, but there's also the whole, and I, I mentioned this before we even got on here, there's the relationship with like friends, like where you've got 30 and 40 year friendships at this point, which is, there's something kind of amazing about that. When I look at Facebook and I just go, oh my gosh, we went to high school with all these people and we're still talking to them, you know? We went to high school and we're still talking right now, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Five, right. six years later. Oh, I feel like you were you were not you were not at our school in ninth grade. I feel like you were there uh, early and then left and then came back. I was I, not there in eighth, half of eighth and ninth grade. Half of eighth and ninth grade. Okay. And all of ninth, and then tenth, eleventh, twelfth. I came back. Okay. Because I stayed great friends with my friends, and I was like, eh, I want to come back. But yeah, I just went through a what midlife crisis you know the eighth grade midlife crisis and my my sister went to a private school her whole existence so my, i told my parents i'm like i want to go to the private school and then nice. i'm like this school is way too small for me i don't like it mm-hmm. so then i had to i like the bigger school better that's yeah, awesome came back but so i mean yeah. that means technically we either met at like 13 or 15 right and so again two weeks ago two and a half weeks ago i turned 50 and you're turning 50 in a few days so it's it's been a minute and like uh brendan larry i just saw he turned 50 um jody bianchi just turned 52 i just saw a bunch of people um we're gonna just see it continuously it's, like it's gonna be this whole year is gonna you know with class 89 i kind of wish we were turning in 2021 though because 2020 has not been fun <laughs> yeah you know you uh not the year to have a big significant birthday year <laughs> so we went we went back and forth and back and forth and michigan's a little tighter than minnesota right michigan michigan spiked Early on was one of the first states where COVID hit really hard. Um, our governor is, uh, I, I'm going to call her proactive. Um, other people would call her a dictator and a tyrant. I, we um, get that same thing, yeah. yeah. I listen, man. We're, we're all making this up as we go. Totally. I, has she been a little strong-handed? Yes. Has she been a little hypocritical? Most definitely. Uh, is she doing what she thinks is best? I believe so. Is she right? I have no clue, right? So whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful I don't have her job. I'll just say it that way. That's what I say to have about all of them too. Same thing. Like I would not want to be in their shoes. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds horrible. But I mean, so like the day... You know, we've we've been watching this spike over the past couple of weeks, and it's getting worse all over the country. Again, like we all you know, do. Minnesota is one of the top top ones too. We're way the top. Like yeah. we're probably one of the top now. But in March, we were not at all. 
Behind yeah, you were non existent. Mm -mm. We no. were, I think we're top 10, maybe 11 in Michigan. I think we're in there too. And it's going, it's the higher, you know, it's not just, we're not going down yet. We're still going up. Right. I don't know. Michigan, I think Michigan is too. So, Seems like hey, Connie, similar. Connie just jumped on. She's What's saying up? happy, happy birthday week. <laughs> Connie O. Yes. So it's, um, so you guys had the shutdown right before your birthday, didn't you? So it got, it got, the shutdown actually went into effect on my birthday. <laughs> on, so I'd like we had, we had my wife and kid and I had dinner plans and we were going to go out to a cool little wow. place called Genji Japanese steakhouse. And we were going to go hang out and do that. Um, and then they're like, okay, on Wednesday, November 18th, it's all over. And so that was going to be canceled regardless. The night before, I had a little gathering with friends where we were going to go do foaling, which is throwing footballs at bowling pins and drink a bunch and hang out with a dozen or 15 people that are cool. And that I could have still done. It was still technically going to be open. But I mean, I spent, I spent three weeks. Do I want to do something? Do I not want to do something? I don't want to be, I don't want to be the catalyst for bad shit happening to people. Right. That's I wanna, my thought too. Mm -hmm. I'm not worried. Like, dude, seriously, if I got the vid, I got the vid, I'll get through <laughs> the it. Vid. It's That's all. what Kevin Hart calls it. The vid. If you watched it? his special, oh my gosh. The vid. The vid. He got it's, the vid early on. <laughs> it's a great, it's a great name. I haven't seen that. That's so funny. I'm glad somebody, <laughs> everybody else is calling it the rona and i'm like no it's the vid the vid yeah um, the vid that's so funny but it was i was like back and forth back and forth back and forth back and forth finally decided let's do it and then it, the day before i'm like screw it i don't want to i don't want to do it i want to mm -hmm. oh no I don't and you probably would have had a few people cancel too on you yeah i'm <laughs> i'm sure but it wasn't mm -hmm. it wasn't about who showed up it was about the idea of doing it right yep. so, you know yep. what it turns out that the way these things work i'm gonna be 50 for a while so we'll just do it in february or june or whatever it'll be fine yeah yeah i haven't ever been a big like look at me for my birthday type thing yeah. just isn't my style so like, you know, I mean, yeah, this week we're, we're spreading it out because I did get together with my girlfriends already because one girlfriend couldn't get, she's going to be gone over the weekend. And we're like, well, we can't, we can't all be together anyway. So let's just do a little, you know, a couple here, a couple there, whatever. But yeah, I, I never really cared that much. So I didn't really, my sister wants to take me on a trip and pay for it and everything but we're just holding off at this point too on that too so we'll see uh, i love it uh, we're anywhere cool where are you going to go any well whatever like you know um it could be tulum there you, go. <laughs> there you go there you go i think that's the plan i uh i was fortunate because my one of my best friends got has a place out in montana um in bozeman near bozeman anyway um and for my 50th birthday we I went out there. So six of my longtime okay. college buddies back in September all went and hung out at this pad. I saw that. Okay. Days. So you kind of did a little trip. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna call this my 50th and and be good with it. I mean, these yep. are like besties from forever. So that worked out good. That's cool. That's cool. We were we talked about Key West. That's where we were aiming to go, but then we just decided to cancel. So uh, that would be fun too. That would be fun too. So, all right. So we've talked relationships. We've talked physical. We've talked mental, right? And I talk about the idea that if there's five pillars in life, right? There's five things that if you can keep this stuff going, um, you're going to live a pretty good life. So the, the fourth one for me is spiritual, right? Mm -hmm. And what's that? What's that? And I look at spiritual not necessarily as a connection to Christ or God or just religion. I look at it as a connection to your place in the universe and, you know, all the way down to your place in your community, right? So how are you, how are you connected? And obviously it's a big thing in my life with a book called Be Connected and Motor City Connect and spending all the time connecting the people that I connect. Um, 
but I feel like I just, I've gotten just so much better at it. Right. It just, I don't even think about it now. I just start making introductions and I'm like, you guys will figure it out and you're yeah. going to talk for four minutes and no, but you, you do a lot of the community stuff too. And I know that you, uh, I don't know if you actually go to church, but I know you're a big Christ believer type person. Yeah. Well, since COVID I have not, but I still even watch church Sundays if I can, I try to. And, uh, you know, I do, I do some, I do more than I used to. Let's put it that way. My okay. upbringing was very strongly religious, so strong that I rebelled against it, but now I've come back and then I do believe, I mean, I completely believe in God. That's just my me, but, um, I also, but I'm not like a, and I made sure my kids were brought up that way too, you know, confirmed and did the Sunday school thing and that kind of thing. But it is kind of sad because I mean, I have a hard time going to church anyway. So let alone when I have the COVID excuse, <laughs> it's kind of like, okay, why would I go to church? <laughs> so, so I watch it and I try, you know, I do definitely do things uh, for God and that kind of thing. So yeah, definitely. Uh, and not like shy about it as much as, you know, used to be where, you know, you don't want to talk about it like that is one thing with age like I don't care like I don't care if people know it doesn't bother me you know right right, right I right. mean people should know to be honest you know do I push talk about it like sit on a podcast and talk you know we don't I mean that's not some people bring it into their business I don't so much you know yeah and and technically I don't think we've ever talked about it on the show right we're mm -hmm. 160 episodes in so it's not like it's been a a, a major source of conversation but no. I think it's also good to have something that um that fuels you that drives you that helps you feel like I said that sense of connection and to whatever it is yeah. um so I think that I think that part's cool um the last piece is is I always talk about finance, right? I talk about, you know, you got to have the, the, if you got spiritual, physical, mental relationships, it's, it's those ducats, man. Um, and, and I always joke if I were wealthy, uh, that would be broken into two spots, right? Because I would be doing some work and then yep. my money would be doing some work, but um, my money is lazy as hell. So my money doesn't do damn nothing, man. It doesn't even go out and recruit more monies. And so I'm working on making smarter money, go out and get money. Um, Got it. But yep. instead I'm also just working. Right. Yep. So that's kind of what that looks like right now. Um, but it's and good. I, th I think money is, you know, I think money is a big part of our lives, no matter what. And I do laugh. I joke with my kids about this because I'm like, money can't buy you happiness, but it sure does make your life easier. Sorry. I will. I'll say it out loud. I mean, it's true. It's if you don't have money, it sucks. And I've been both ways. You know what I mean? Like it just sucks. So yes, being comfortable. Do you have to have millions? Not necessarily. That'd be great. But you know, um, it, it does maybe it doesn't buy you happiness, but it definitely buys you comfortableness and a lot less stress. I, I agree with that. Yeah. I don't think you need to have all the money in the world, but having some is a lot better than having none because I've been in yep. both positions yep. and, um, you know, depending on what your definition of success is, um, you probably ultimately need some because at the, at the bare minimum, that's kind of how people keep score. Uh, and in the, in the reality of things, we actually have to, um, we need it to be able to, to, to do we the got stuff crap we want to do, for. right? <laughs> yeah. It's like the I mean, it's work. life. You got to live, you know, and you got to, if you can't, if you can't pay your overhead of your bills that, you know, of the house you live in and that kind of thing, it sucks. I mean, it's just, you got to have the enough money to at least, you know, live comfortably be able to go buy the food to feed your kids that kind of thing so the that's kind of system you know is not as cool as it once was which is unfortunate because i would trade all kinds of stuff <laughs> be like here man you want to give me some cow cool let me let me oh, show yeah. you how to connect with people that need to buy more cow <laughs> Jeez. i don't know if that's a thing i don't think we ever lived in that world terry but <laughs> 
<laughs> Maybe. Probably not. That would have been fun. You know, speaking of, let's talk about technology. Okay. Think about technology because, you know, you just brought that up like the old fashioned. I mean, that's way beyond beer. But my, my son actually asked me the other day, did you ever have a black and white TV, mom? And I go, yeah, the first TV in my bedroom was black and white. And you know what I used to watch on that just the TV? Hee-haw. Close. <laughs> Little House on the Prairie. <laughs> oh, same. Basically the same thing, right? <laughs> same thing. Yeah, that's funny, man. I, like, I remember having, we only had one TV before I moved to Bloomington. Right. And that TV sat in the little den in our house and you want like to change the channel. Yeah. <laughs> like from front to back. <laughs> yeah, it was it was it was it was deeper than it was wide. You're right. Um, and you had to get up and you know change the channel. Oh, yeah. and that was it. <laughs> and that was but it. now this makes me feel old when we talk like this. I mean, telephones. You know, we used to drag the cord down the hallway so you could try to bring it into your room and hide the conversations. Dude, you thought you were cool if you had a push button phone, right? Call waiting, Call. other line. Yeah. Oh, wait, hold on. I got another line or the party line. I, I got another call coming in. Yeah. You, with not, and then caller ID came out and you could actually tell who was going to be on that other line. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. Tough right there. No more crank calls <laughs> when that happened. Well, like my, your first couple of cars had two keys, right? One for the door and one for the ignition. Now you're like, we don't even take keys out of our pocket. Bob, we can push yeah. a button. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy, man. The technology's come a long way, and the computers and the world of you know that how we're talking to each other right now even is you know just that world has come a long way. And so I look at like what we've seen in our 50 years, what's it going to be in 50 more years? Can you imagine if we would have bought zoom stock the first time we recorded oh. a podcast on zoom? Yeah. I don't know what, I don't know what their stocks at right now. Um, but I'm gonna find out in about 27 seconds. Been we've been, we've one. been on here since probably, was it 16 or 17? It's uh, it's at $411 a share today. And when we got on, uh, well, this is not really helping us. Doesn't show. Yeah, it's, it's uh, maybe they didn't, oh, they started, they didn't even, they didn't go public until 2019, so. Yeah, I was going to say, I think they were privately held back then. Yep. Yeah, yep, yep. So they started at $62 on April 18th, 2019. So if we would have, if we would have gotten on, you know, if we would have bought it when it first came out, we, <laughs> it's not a We've bad done little quite. return. We, the only stock that we really invested in for our children was um, Facebook. That's a good move. Mm-hmm. It was, it's still, we, we've hung on to it still, you know, it may die someday, but it's, yeah, we paid $40 or $39 when we bought it. So that's not bad. Yeah. That, that one's a good one. Yeah. So there's always those things to think about for sure. When, when uh, the vid hit, we're going to call it the vid. When the vid hit, (laughs) it's, it, there were many stocks that we, you know, we had talked about looking at, and I think there's, I also look at right now too, where is the world going to go with careers? And one of the things that I've been thinking about is the careers, like online, anything that has to do with computers and technology, it's, it's not going anywhere. You know, that's a safe career move, you know, for the future too. So online marketing, you know, more people are jumping onto that because so many people came out of work, you know, ended up not working because of the vid so lots of things lots of things to think about so our future and one of the things so what's something in the next 25 years that you want to accomplish let's end with that like that's before 75 years old you know after 75 i don't know how much we'll accomplish but we'll see (laughs) um so there's a there's a few different things that are on that list right um there's some financial goals, right? In terms of, in terms of making some dollars. Um, I, I've got a very stated goal that in the next three years, I want to earn $500,000. And part of the reason that I took this position is I asked that question point blank. Can I, 
Mm-hmm. And after we hemmed and hawed about it for a couple of minutes, uh, the, the owner of the company recognized that, or he, when he said, yeah, you probably could, uh, I clarified after he said, yes, I'm saying, I just want to make sure you understand. I'm saying aggregate over three years. He's like, oh, I thought you meant in year three. Yeah, no problem. So that's, that's uh-huh. one goal, right? A short term yep. kind of three-year goal. Uh, so I would like to, to do that multiple times over. So financial is one because quite frankly, that hasn't been a priority of mine. Serving others have been a priority of mine. Um, so that's one. Travel is the reason I want to earn some of that money, right? There's some places I want to go. Um, I don't care if it's New Zealand or Australia or both, but I definitely need to see some beaches in that part of the world because I haven't done anything like that. Uh, and then you know, the other thing that I'm really, really interested in is making sure my daughter gets off to the right start of her life, right? So I'm, I'm looking forward to, to watching her continue to grow. She turns 18 the day after you turn 50. So she's, uh, you know, she's almost, she's almost there, right? She's almost fully hatched. Um, so I'm curious. My wife told me that, by the way. Because she had messaged me on Facebook. <laughs> oh, did she? She what she said? Your video. Yeah. What what <laughs> what did she tell you? That your daughter's birthday was the day after mine. My- oh, mm-hmm. that's good. Yeah, yeah. We, we've talked about it, and that's part of the reason I remember when yours is too. Because mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, yours is the day before my kids. Um, so making sure that she does some stuff. You know, my 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 boss here, my boss. Yeah, that's my boss. Um, he asked me, what do you want to do? What's the one thing you want to do in this next 12 months, right? You're 50. What's the one thing you want to do? And I said, well, I want to, I want to jump out of an airplane. Right? I want to go skydiving with my kid because she had asked me when she's 18, if she could go, but she tore up her knee. I'll, wa- I'll watch your pictures. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she tore up her knee last year. So now she's not as excited about going anymore. So uh, now I gotta, yeah. I gotta come up with a new one. And so my new one is I want to go sail in the caribbean like i don't oh. have to be saline i just mm-hmm. want to be on a sailboat right i don't have sure. to be the captain sure. of the ship yep. i just want to be on the ship so and i've done it before um but i definitely want to do it again so that's my that's mine what about you so give me let's do it that way let's do like a year next 12 months something you want to do while you're 50 and then beyond and then overall you know, I have the finance one too, of course. Um, mine, you know, in in what I do, it's, um, I know a lot of people doing it in my niche and in my business. So, you know, my goal in the next three years is to be a million, you know, 500 to a million dollar. Here's the reason I don't want to be a million a year business. I don't think I want the headaches of the overhead. <laughs> Cause you would end up having a lot more headaches with that. So, you know, my goals aren't like what others, there's a lot of people in my industry making the million dollars a year and that's fine, but I don't know that that's as deep as I want to go, but I, I do want it to get, get between 500 and, and a million. Um, and then, so that's definitely a big goal. And that's my own personal business goal. Like it doesn't matter you know, whether my husband is doing, making a ton of money or no money or whatever, it, I don't care. Cause like I have my own goals. Like, you know, that's just something I want to do. And it's not even for the money all completely. It's more like, just, I say I did it, you know, in a way there you too. Go. That's right. But, um, cause I've always, I've always told my dad, like I have been a money person. So always he, he still doesn't even believe me, but someday it hasn't happened yet. I've said, I'm going to make a million a year. I've told him that since I was like in my twenties. So, so then, um, the other goals would be, yes, getting my kids in the right direction, you know, 22 year olds still can't figure it out, but I don't blame them. You know, these kids, you know, I call him a kid still, he's a kid, you know, um, they're not good. They, it took, we're, we're still figuring it out and we're 50 years old. You know what I mean? So I think you're always evolving and always trying to figure it out. So just making sure they get in the right direction. And, you know, my kid's 16. I want to see him have a good couple last years of high school that are more normal than what they've been dealing with. He, he doesn't give a crap that he's fine with it. Like, but it's so weird because he doesn't leave his room all day long. Like it's, 
he's got the setup of the computers and all that. And so it's really strange, but it's, they're normal, you know, but kind of is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then my other big thing is in the next 25 years, if you want to talk about that, I want to start doing more that where I am financially freer do have not doing as much work so that I can give back more. What does that look like? I have no idea. I mean, I feel like I give back in my business, but I want to give back in other ways too. So I want to be able to take and not think about me and give back to others more in mm-hmm. some way. Some Did you do that locally or the different parts around the globe? Or what do you think? No idea. No clue at this point. Locally is fine, you know, and, I, and to make sure that my kids see it happening too, because they need to learn, you know, to give back also. I, uh, I used to joke all the time, I became a philanthropist before I became wealthy. And that's a bad combination, right? So when you're when you have a choice of giving back, right, we have time, we have knowledge, or we have dollars, you know, and of those three, there's only one that's non replenishable. You know, so if I spend all my time, not all my time, but if I spend a bunch of time, giving time away, that, uh, in hindsight, I wish I would have been more uh, prudent about that. In fact, I just watched a video this morning while I was working out from Seneca, who is an old Roman Stoic philosopher about time management. And he talks about that very thing. So I've been deep in the Stoic philosophy for the last couple of months because uh, I think when you, when in times of crisis, you go back to the basics and quite frankly, as far as knowledge and wisdom go, there's nothing more timely or basic than stoicism. So it's been really interesting. You're like, you're like, oh my God, I'm so bored. Stop talking. (laughs) (laughs) It's awesome. (laughs) That's great. But it does make sense. Time, time is money, you know? So if you're giving so much time, you might not be making as much money, you know? So it's, it's, there's, yeah, I think time management is so, so important. And us entrepreneurs can get way off task, you know? Nonstop, nonstop. Mm-hmm. So good. Well, Janet E. Johnson, uh, happy soon to be 50th lady. Yes, Congratulations. Happy you. Here we are. I know, here we are, but we're still going to have fun. I... <laughs> Seriously, man, I thought at 18, I was like, I'm not going to make it past 32. So I got like, I have 18 bonus years on that. There's an app out there just to, to, it, it's called, you download it for free on your phone and it's terrible how, what it sounds like, but it's called, when will you die? Nice. And when we do, when you punch in, like if you smoke and if you do all these things and, and um, you know, your habits, you know, do you exercise and that I'm like living to 102. You know, Jeff's dying at like 80, you know, <laughs> so, just, when will you, but you got to do it because it's interesting to see, like, I'm, I know I'm going to live a long life because I stay healthy and all that kind of stuff. So when? definitely have a lot longer life in front of us, but life is short and, you know, things can happen. Yep. Age is the number. Connie just said, absolutely. It's, it's just a number and we can still. I'm still 39. I could maybe try 29, but I kind of got rid of that a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> Evidently, there's a song called When Will You Die by the They Might Be Giants. So, really? in case anybody is curious, yeah. Okay. Who, knew? who knew? Who knew? Very interesting. Very interesting. And All we'll right. end with Connie's mom is almost 100, or she'll be 101 on December 25th. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah my- 101. So, yeah. Wow. Wow. My grandfather passed away on December 26th a few years ago, uh, 25 days after his 100th birthday. So that's pretty crazy. So good that for good for your mom, Connie. That's yeah. very cool. Yeah, very, awesome. Very cool. Well, happy 50th. And we normally, this is a weird podcast, like this isn't our normal, but hey, you got to know us a little bit if you listened, you know, a little bit about our background and what we do. But uh, we'll get back to teaching you, you know, things. <laughs> yeah, that will actually grow your business. Yeah, yes. This growth. This is life growth, I guess, was this. this one. <laughs> as long as it's not life ending, that's all that matters. And even so do you want to, I'll let you wrap it up, Terry. You've gotten good at that. 
All uh, right. So on the off chance you'd like to hang out with us a little more, you can join our little Facebook group at businessgrowthtime.xyz or even better, go listen to some of that knowledge we've dropped or had wonderful guests drop with us over at businessgrowthtime.com slash podcast or slash blog if you're so inclined. So lots of lots of lots of great content that designed to help you be better at what you do. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot. Have a good one, guys. See ya. And oh, so let me stop this. Stop the live stream. Done. I, I hit the end and it was going to kill the meeting. Let me stop the recording.